morning, everybody, and happy Friday. It is my favorite day of the week, Masterclass Friday. This is the day where myself and all the Adobe evangelists that are in the community uh, team get to show you their latest and greatest features and techniques and tips and tricks in their various disciplines, including graphic design, photography, which is kind of where you are today, right now, as well as um, audio video, as well as digital painting and drawing, and of course, Adobe Express. So fun filled day, even if you can't stay, you can always come back and watch the replays. There's always replays unless some technical weird issue happened and it didn't save it. But uh, replay, you don't ever have to ask, we're always doing replays. Uh, so the second thing that brings up as far as housekeeping before we dive in today's, in today's topic is I know you could be watching on YouTube such as um, Doc Hamilton and Reglock over there. I see them on YouTube right now. You could be watching on Twitter. You could be watching on LinkedIn. You could be watching on Facebook like Sylvia who just popped in from Arizona. You could be watching on Twitch. And I think I got everything. But mainly if you're watching on Adobe Live, which is be.net slash Adobe Live, uh, that's the main chat. That's the one I'll be looking at. So you can continue to hang out watching wherever you want. But if you if I miss your question and it's really important, head over to the main chat because that's the one where not only I'm watching, but the moderators are watching as well. So with that said, um, thanks for joining me today. For those of you who are new, um, this is I try and do a photography masterclass on topics of interest. Sometimes we do live shoots. Sometimes we do retouching. Sometimes we do um, tips and tricks. And sometimes we tackle new topics like AI and how it can help you and how it's already been helping you in your photography and especially in your editing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, dive right in. I'm going to turn off the uh, Adobe Live banner. I'm going to switch over to my desktop. Now we're going to be sprinkling in some Photoshop. We're going to be sprinkling in some Lightroom. We're going to be sprinkling in something new, which is called Firefly. And uh, hopefully I can um, encourage you that AI is not necessarily a bad thing. B, I can tell you that you can take advantage of it today and, and help you if you haven't already. And C, some things to look, for, look, look at going forward and how it can not replace what you do, but augment or give you new revenue opportunities for what you do. All right, so let's do it. I'm going to switch over to my desktop and let's just do a quick recap of some things that were have already been in Adobe products for years that are AI based and have been continued to be improved that are AI based. So some of these things have been in maybe a year or two. Some of these things have been in the last six months. Some of these things have been in for a few years. It just depends on the feature. So Adobe has been doing AI in our products. We, we nicknamed it Adobe Sensei. For a long time this is not new what's new is what i'm going to show you towards the end all right so first and foremost um, i have a platter of desserts here and uh, if i wanted to select those the, tr the traditional ways would be you know maybe you tried to lasso it and that was um, not a good way to do it maybe you tried you know back in the 90s to use the magic wand and shift and shift and shift and shift and shift and click and click and click until you try to get it off that wasn't necessarily the best good use of your time in 2023. So we introduced um, the quick select tool and the quick select tool is definitely a, a quicker way to do things. But now we have an AI based tool that is called the object selection tool. So when I click the object selection tool, it will process the whole image, not just what because it doesn't know what I want to select, but it, you will see this little object finder spin for for a second or two while it's processing the whole image. And now as I hover over each object, it knows that it's there and I can just simply click. If I want both the red ones, sh shift click. If I want the red one over here, shift click. If I want the red one down here, shift click. And that is much, much, much faster than we've ever done it before. Thanks to AI, thanks to AI looking at this image and figuring out what the objects were and allowing me to hover over them and just simply click to select them. 
Now, the object selection tool didn't always use, it, did, it didn't always work that way. So let me deselect Command D. And it, it used to work by simply dragging a rectangle or a lasso around the object. And again, it would figure out what the object is and make that selection. So it just keeps getting better with time. The teams keep making, adding machine learning, which is another form of AI to where it can identify, you know, known objects or objects that's been trained on and continue to get better with the selection. So with each new version of Photoshop, for as long as I can remember, they've added new selection tools and methods, and now they've enhanced each new version with uh, enhancements to even some of the existing tools. Object selection is one of them. It didn't always used to auto select or auto detect. Now it does. So here's another hidden one, especially a time saver. If you say, hey, I'm going to need all of these objects, I can head over to the layers panel. And in the layers panel, you notice I didn't make any layers. It's just the background. I can right click on that layer. Here's a hidden feature. Uh, where is it? Mask all objects. So if I just simply say mask all objects, it will look at everything that's already identified and make a separate mask in the layers panel for me. I, I, I welcome that. <laughs> that's a good thing for me. Uh, now, if I want to use those, I just hold down my command key on Mac, control key on Windows. I can even go rename them if I want to, so I know which one's which, and it will just let me go ahead and select those anytime I get ready. So, um, yeah, that's that's AI for good. I like that. Let's deselect. Okay, next up, um, let's talk about one of the bigger AI features we started implementing, and it's a whole set of filters called neural filters. Now, the neural filters are um, were always AI based from the very beginning, and uh, we just put a whole whole category in the uh, filter menu for neural filters. And those filters, half of them were always, and to this day, are so, you know, still in beta because uh, they're always tweaking them, trying to make them better, trying to make them production ready, but letting you play with them up front because maybe you can use them now. Maybe you can use them in their current state. So some of them are ready to go. Some of them need more work. And um, even the ones that need more work, they'll, sh they'll say the word beta next to them. So you know, hey, this isn't necessarily the way it's gonna always work. Uh, but let me go ahead and go into the neural filters. Neural filters, that brings up the side panel. And for example, the skin smoothing, smart portrait, makeup transfer, those are kind of ready to go. Landscape mixer, that one says beta. Harmonization, which is um, matching the color of one layer to another layer, that one's still in beta. Color transfers in beta, depth blurs in beta, and photo restorations in beta. But the rest that don't say beta, they kind of think they're ready to be used today. So for example, even though Landscape Mixer um, is in beta, I'm gonna go ahead and try it, why not? So when I turn this on, I have a couple different choices. Number one, I can take my existing landscape and make it look like it were shot in any one of these sample environments. So that doesn't mean replace the picture, it simply means if I use this wintry, snowy mountain um, um, shot, that means turn my image into a winter scene, winter landscape. If I do this, um, this kind of sun, sunrise, sunset, then it means give it that kind of look, that kind of lighting. Now, if you don't want to use one of the presets, maybe you have one of your own photos, you kind of want to match and make this one look like your own photo, then you can go ahead and just click custom and then uh, choose which image that's already open that you wanna use. Or you don't even have to use any of the presets. You just wanna come down here and you say, hey, I wanna make this look like winter, you have sliders. So I can just drag the slider over and say, hey, turn my scene into winter. And it'll process, because it's a neural filter, it has to do that, and it figured out what the ground should look would look like with snow on it what the trees would look like, kind of in a winter scene, what the sky would look like, what the background would look like, and it did it. All within seconds. This would take me a long time to do manually. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try and guess how long it would take me to do this manually. But I have a slider that lets me even back off and say, well, maybe I don't want it so wintry, maybe start to turn it into winter. So I can adjust the amount of winter I get 
on a slider. All right, let's pull that all the way back. Now it's already kind of summer and, and summer and um, spring. So let's say if I wanted to make it autumn. Now with autumn, I envision, I don't know, but I'm envisioning that it would kind of make it orange-like. In other words, fall colors. So for example, I could uh, drag the autumn slider all the way over and that's exactly what I thought it would give me, like kind of fall burnt orange kind of colors. And uh, again, if I wanted something, maybe sunset, I can drag sunset over and I get kind of sunset colors. And again, perfect, no, but a beta that did it in one click and it's gonna add it as a layer and I can continue to tweak it all I want. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> so uh, you can kind of see where we're going with AI and neural filters. And again, the neural filters were introduced, I don't know, four years ago now. So this has been around for a minute. Okay, so let me uh, let me go ahead and just simply say, look, let me show you what happens if I click on a picture. So if I click on the winter picture, and then I say, um, did I click on that picture? Preset. Hold on, let's do that one. All right, for some reason my presets aren't working now because I've been doing sliders. So let me cancel out of that and try it again. Let's go neuro filters. I didn't have to cancel all the way out. I could just turn it off and on. But anyway, let's go ahead and say landscape mixer and let's click on a preset. Huh, my preset isn't doing what it's supposed to do unless I'm missing something. All right, but anyway, let's just go ahead and simply say winter again. And now that I got my winter, I'm gonna go ahead and say, no, don't put it out on the current layer. Make a new layer or make a new layer masked. Uh, new layer masks. There you go. And I click OK. And that will give me the option to always have that effect on its own layer that I can come back and tweak and do whatever I want to do with. OK, next up. <clears throat> this is kind of one that I, I was like really impressed with. <clears throat> if you're old enough or your parents are old enough or your grandparents are old enough and you got some old pictures around, they probably kind of look like this. They're old, they're in a photo album, they're kind of like, you know, scratchy, torn, you know, so forth and so on. I've restored photos like this manually and I know it can take hours, days, weeks to get it just right. So there's a photo restoration neural filter that isn't perfect by any means. But the way I look at any kind of AI tool is that if it can get me 50% of the way there, 60% of the way there, 70% of the way there, 90% of the way there, and I only have to do a little bit at the end, it was worth using. So it would be just like if you had a five mile um, you know, trip from one spot to another and you were walking, and, so, and you're maybe hitchhiking, don't do that, but if you were hitchhiking and someone said, I can take you three miles, and you felt safe enough to do it, you do it because you're going to be three miles closer to your destination without having to do the walk. So same thing. Uh, weird example, I know. But anyway, let's go ahead and zoom in. Uh, now, uh, I can pick one of these. I can do both of these. I'm going to pick one of these. I'm just going to go ahead and crop it. And let's go ahead and do this. And I, if I were really restoring this, I don't need the photo album itself. I just need the picture. So I'd probably do something like that with my crop. Now that I've got the crop, uh, let's go ahead and zoom up. And I even crop it down some more from the top. So let's do that. We don't need all of that. There we go. Perfect. And now, um, now I'm giving the neural filter something to work with. So let's go in and let's choose filter, neural filters. And down here at the bottom, another beta filter, uh, photo restoration. Turn it on. And I'm going to go ahead and crank up the, the scratch reduction. I'm just turn it all the way up right off the bat. Because without it, without it, with it turned way down, I, I can't really see that it's doing much. So I usually start at the 100 point and then pull back if I want to or need to. All right. And there we go. So this is before. That's after. Before, after. So do I need to do fix this stuff manually? Sure, that stuff manually, maybe over here in the corner. Yeah, maybe down here in the arm where it didn't do it good enough. So, <laughs> like, 
And, and this is one that kind of like I discovered by accident, I think even on one of the master classes. I'm gonna go ahead and do this uh, as a new layer. Okay, click okay. So now that's a new layer. Now uh, again, before, after. Now with the new layer, I'm gonna go back into that neural filter. Let's get out of the crop. Neural filter. Filter, oh, sorry. Neural filter, I was, in the, I was doing the do it again neural filter. Okay, neural filter, photo restoration, crank up the scratch reduction all the way. Let it reprocess again. So in other words, all I'm doing is taking the result and running the exact same neural filter on it again, because now I'm giving it this as the starting point. And it made some minor improvements. But sometimes I've learned that running that particular neural filter two times, or maybe even three times, it, it, it makes it that much better. So I have less work to do when I'm done. So if I'm happy with that result, that didn't really do that much this time, but I've seen it do kind of a drastic, wow, it really made it even better the second time. Um, but that in this particular case, it isn't. Now I can also say photo enhancement, um, and that's cool, it'll do that. But let's take it up one more notch. All we're doing with photo restoration is removing scratches and fixing the image and so forth and so on, kind of removing the yellowing or all of that stuff. But this is still a black and white photo. What if I were going to go in and turn on another neuro filter called Colorize? Because you can use more than one neuro filter at the same time. So I'll just turn that one on. And now I have a photo that's that's been, most of the color work has been done. There's still some areas over here where it's not quite right. And I could go in even in the, um, even in the uh, neuro filter itself and kind of try and fix some of that with the little bitty thing that pops up over here and maybe adjust the color and see what that does. And I can you know, start trying to bring some of that color back. But it colorized the bulk of the image for me without me having to do it from scratch, stroke by stroke, brush by brush, pixel by pixel. So again, I, I consider that good AI. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. So I can output that as a new layer. And so now I have, I went from this to that to this with a few clicks. Perfect? No. Still needs some work? Yes. Still needs 100% of the work? Absolutely not. Maybe it's only 10 or 20% now to get it to be the way I want. All right, next up. This is an oldie but a goodie. I've used this photo before. It's a stock photo. I don't know this guy, but I can go in with AI, machine learning, and make adjustments. His, his one eye is either bigger or more open than the other. So let's uh, convert this for smart filters so we can always get out of it if, or change it if we want. So convert for smart filters. Let's make that a smart object. And it did. And now let's go to filters and let's come down to, uh, let's try the liquify. All right, liquify brings up another window over here. Liquify is um, AI based as well because it's identifying now uh, different parts of the face. So if I click on the face here, it's it's recognized where the, the face is in different areas. So if I hover over the nose, I get controls for the nose. I hover over the mouth, I get controls for the mouth. I hover over the face shape, the eyes, I get controls for those. So I can even, I can use the sliders, but I can even now control this on canvas. So let's see if I can make this a little, there we go, make that one a little smaller. And kind of bring that eye more into the same size as the other one. I can even go in and say, hey, you know, he's a little happier about that now just by adjusting his face, making him smile a little bit more. And that's really kind of cool. Like, <laughs> I think that's good AI to be able to do that kind of stuff 
without overdoing it, without like, I didn't make it look like, this doesn't look like him anymore. Just made a few tweaks using the AI-based liquify. So all of these things are here. So you have uh, left and right eyes. So this is cool that it now separates. It didn't used to separate these out. They were, used to be all one slider. So I can now uh, adjust that one with the sliders. I can even adjust eye tilt with the slider. Not that he needed it, but I'm just showing you what it does. I can, e um, I can even go in and adjust eye distance, <laughs> which again, he doesn't need that, but just showing you what it does. And uh, we did adjust the smile. We can make the upper lip smaller, bigger, the bottom lip smaller, bigger. So we are adjusting these things. Uh, again, uh, this is just playing around. He doesn't need any of this. But, uh, and then we get into face shape. So his forehead, which that's going to bring down, uh, I should probably pin the edges for that. Hang on, pin edges. There we go. Uh, forehead. Going to bring his forehead down, and that looks stretched, so I wouldn't do that. But we also have chin height. And uh, jawline. I kind of like the jawline right about there. Again, I'm just playing around. Face width. So you can kind of see how this has helped in portrait retouching. Again, I've exaggerated a lot of this. I would not do this to a person. I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't do all of these things to a person. To anybody I knew, especially. But <clears throat> it, it's just letting you know what's possible. And I, I didn't really get into everything. I'm just playing around with a few things. Now, there's also um, some brush options and uh, things that you can do for the rest of the Liquify features. But that would be Liquify. So if I click OK, this is before. That's after. And now the before kind of looks off, like really off, compared to just streamlining it a little bit with the after. Okay, let's continue on. Now, I, I, I've liquefied this one as well in the past. I've shown you what liquefy can do. And liquefy reaches a limit. Like, you know, with the mouth, for example, let's say this kid took his school picture and mom isn't happy that he was upset and didn't smile at all. Now, I can move his lips up a little bit, but he's still not going to look happy. <laughs> he's just going to look like he looks with his lips up a little bit. So let's go into Neural Filter. Now, before we were in Liquify, where we were just literally moving parts of the face. But if I go into Neural Filters, which are AI-based, and I go into Smart Portrait, there's literally a happiness slider. Come on. Can't ask for more than that. So with the happiness slider, I'm going to crank it all the way up. And it's going to do something that Liquify back in the day just and still to this day just can't do. Now it's going to, it's going to take a few seconds to process this because it's in this particular filter is processing it in the cloud. So that means it's using the more powerful engines up in the cloud to process this image and bring the results right back. Now there's also going to be some distortion around his hair. That would be easy enough to just um, brush out but there is I he has a smile with teeth we opened his mouth with AI and again I would just brush this little piece around his hair and around his ear off and around that ear off at from a layer perspective I would just mask those things out but again AI did that so uh, this kid looks like he didn't get the gift he wanted for his birthday exactly. Now he's, he's a little okay. And again, it's a slider. You don't want to do that much. Back off of it. So that, I gave you the extreme. So it's going to process that one a little quicker because it already knows what it, what it looks like and what it's doing. And um, yeah, hang on. There's expression also. Okay. Someone said something about a birthday present. So let's see what surprise does. And again, I'm exaggerating these. I'm cranking the sliders all the way up. Chances are I wouldn't do this for real. But I'm, I'm curious to see what surprise will do for him. Anticipation. <laughs> He's like, oh? Okay, that wasn't the result I expected. But there it is. A surprise look um, now with uh, AI. 
So again, uh, distort nose, yep. So again, if it's too much, pull back. That's why it's a slider, because on or off isn't good enough. You need a slider to be able to say how much of something you want. Yeah, the nose is still distorted, but that look looks better. And maybe it's because it's happiness and surprise. So maybe pull the happiness back and just do surprise. But you get the idea. I'm going to pull this one all the way back to the beginning and let it undo that. And yeah, I still need to brush back in his nose, but that's it. So I would output that as a new layer with a mask. And then when I got back to that layer, I'd fix the hair, the ears, and hit, brush back in his original nose, and away we go. So, he looks shook. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, and again, here's our before, here's our after. So we have the original nose to work with. No big deal there. And for example, so when someone says, how would you do that? I'd grab my brush, I'd go to the mask of that new layer that I asked for, and I would just simply brush back in his original nose, so it's not distorted. So that's how I would do it. And again, I would just brush out or mask out the hair problems and maybe the ear problem, just bring the original ear back maybe, the original ear back and the original hairline back. Just like that. That's how I would do it. Okay, so AI taking a photo that went from that to that. Just I can't imagine having to do that manually because if I were going to do it manually, the first thing I would need would I would need a photo of him smiling with his teeth or someone's teeth to be able to put in there. And it would never really look right if I used someone else's mouth or teeth because it wouldn't be him. This is actually adjusting it based on what it sees in the AI. All right, next up. Something that's not as drastic, not as controversial, but something photographers have been doing now for a few years, whether it's in Photoshop or third-party tools. You have a landscape, you have a cityscape, you have a, a whatever, and you don't like the um, you don't like the sky you got. And I've certainly taken some landscapes with some pretty dull skies because that was the sky I was dealt with that day. Well, now I could go in and I could just simply say, uh, first of all, I just, I just want to point this one out. I don't need to do this one right now, but I always forget to show it. You, even if you don't want to replace the sky, but you just want to enhance it without touching the rest of the image. Well, there's an AI based select sky that just selects it. Doesn't do anything else. If I do that one, it just makes a selection of the sky. So it masked out the, the telephone pole there or the electrical pole there, masked out all the mountains and just selected the sky. Now I can do whatever I want to do in, with it. I can bring up the camera raw filter, I can bring up curves, I can bring up levels, whatever I want to do and make any adjustments I want because the sky is selected. So um, thanks, Tom. Tom says, amazing demo, Terry. We have come so far from the early days of Photoshop. People would have literally killed or paid millions of dollars to have this 20 years ago because of the amount of time it would have saved them or letting them do things that they literally couldn't do before. Now we take it for granted. Oh, I need to fix the sky, select it. Not spend five minutes trying to select it. Just click a button, select it. Okay, sky select it. Now do whatever you want to do. So if I, for example, brought up my levels, just as a quick example, and I adjust the levels of the sky to kind of brighten it up a little bit. And maybe bring up the, um, I don't want to do that, just the midtones. Uh, bring up, just adjust the sky. Just that quickly, just that easily with a couple of clicks. If I were to go in now and just bring up the, um, and I wouldn't do it this way, I would convert for smart filters first. But if I want to just bring up the camera raw filter. That brings up the camera raw filter. And then I can do whatever I want to do because just the sky is going to be affected. So if I adjust the temperature, even though it looks like it's doing the whole thing, trust me, it's only doing the sky. So if I wanted to warm that sky up a bit and click OK, it only affected the sky because that's all that was selected. 
So just AI-based selections have been helping us for years. Now, let's take this up a notch. Let's deselect. Let's undo. Actually, and then deselect. That's simply just making a selection. Well, if I don't like the sky at all and adjusting it's not going to fix it, I need a different sky. That's where replace sky comes in, sky replacement. So if I go sky replacement as an AI-based feature, that's going to do two things. It's going to make the same selection that the select sky did, but it's also going to go in and start giving me skies that I can actually literally use to replace it. So that's before, that's after. That's just the last sky used. You can pick whatever sky you want. You can add your own skies, of course. We give you sample skies to work with just so you have something there, but you can always import your own skies. So for example, when I pop this down, that is one of my skies. That's in my TW skies folder. So I can go ahead and just simply say, use that sky. Give me something super dramatic over this mountain range. Use this sky. Use this one. Let's try any one of these. And it's not only replacing the sky, it's actually making adjustments to the foreground as well. So it's adjusting the foreground to kind of match that sky. Now, the one complaint, <clears throat> and I agree that most people have with sky replacement, is unfortunately, it's still to this day, and I, I, I hammer the Photoshop team about this all the time, it doesn't do a reflection. So for example, if that, instead of a road there, if there were water there, you would want your sky reflected into the water. Now, I can do it manually, but why would I do it manually if an AI can do it? So, uh, yeah, for, until until they, we get that, I have to do it manually, just duplicate the layer, flip it over, so forth and so on, and, and, and multiply it in or use some blending mode to blend it in. But we're, we've gone this far, why not have it replace the sky and, and third party some third party tools uh, also add the reflection as well. Okay, so whether it's one of those skies that I uploaded, one of my own skies, and this is kind of a cool one too, or it's a sky that came with uh, Photoshop, so you can pick one of these. You can pick whatever sky you want. These are royalty free for you to use, so if you pick one of these. Um, the thing I kind of always just remind people that, yeah, I can pick one of the ones that, that Adobe gives me, but like blue skies, spectacular and sunrises or sunsets are, um, these are Adobe skies, but then it's not 100% my image anymore. So if I were to replace it with this sky, for example, okay, I can use it, I can print it, I can do whatever I want. I have the right to do that, but it's not 100% mine. Does that make sense? But even if I use one of my own skies and it was not taken even in the exact same location, it's still 100% my photography because I photographed the sky and I photographed the landscape. So it's 100% mine. I own the rights to that image. Um, all of it. <laughs> so I can do whatever I want. I can sell it. And it, you gotta remember too, the tree is in there from that original image. So maybe you need to pull that down or rescale it or resize it because the sky is movable in this as well. Uh, okay, so that is sky replacement. Let me go find a better sky to replace it with. Uh, I kind of like that, but it may not match. And uh, this is an AI generated sky. That was a Firefly demo that I did um, in one of my videos where we're going to get to that in a few minutes where that sky didn't exist. That sky was generated by an AI. So it's not an Adobe sample JPEG that we gave you. It's not one of my skies. It was a sky that didn't exist that I typed in a text prompt and asked for, and it gave me. All right, um, so that, that's a whole new implication. So let's say that I want that one. I click OK, or get out of this, click OK. And that will create a layer set, a layer group of everything I just did. So I can go in, I can turn it off, get right back to the original, turn it on, or go into any part of it in the layers panel and continue to tweak it so I can do whatever I need to do to it. Okay, that is uh, Replace Sky. Let's move on. 
here's another AI based one that continues to get better. So one of the early AI things we did was content aware fill. Remember that from, I don't know, a decade ago, <laughs> content aware fill is kind of like the beginnings of AI in Photoshop, where it would, you make a selection, say content aware fill, and it would just automatically fill in the surrounding pixels to try and make it look like it wasn't there. Well, now we've taken that way up a notch with one click delete and fill. So for example, we got these horses, someone told me they're not playing, they're fighting. So we got these horses fighting. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my object selection tool and I'm gonna come down here and click on this one horse that's kind of like in the middle, distracting the fighting, distracting us from looking at the fighting. And now I can go ahead and right click, here, let me get out of this. Right click, oh, actually I need to be in that, sorry. There we go. I need to be in a selection tool to do this. Right click and choose delete and fill selection. So delete and fill selection is brand new. You can also get to it from the edit menu. So if I say delete and fill selection, normally if I were doing a content aware fill and I made a selection, I would want to expand that selection by a few pixels. So because it doesn't, it doesn't usually like it when it's tight along the edges and it doesn't do as good of a job. So, but with one click delete and fill, I don't have to do that. So I can just do one click delete and fill and it's gone. I'm going to see a little bit of smudge right there. And that would take me two seconds to patch out or fix. But one click delete and fill has made even content aware fill 10 times better than it was back in the day. All right, next up, let's go into, do I have it open? Now, notice I have two Photoshop's open. I have the Photoshop open that everyone has, the current version, and I have the new beta. I'm gonna show you an AI based tool that is coming to Photoshop. It's public beta, so I'm not disclosing something secret. But you guys, you guys can go even go to your Creative Cloud and download this public beta as well. So I'm going to go to the public beta. So now I'm in the one that says beta at the top here, just so you, just so we're clear. I always do that. Hang on, let me zoom up to the right. There we go. The public beta. So I'm in the different version of Photoshop. And now what I want to do in this version of Photoshop is use a new tool that's coming to Photoshop. So again along the lines of continuing to make it better we had first tool we had to kind of like heal things or remove things was the healing brush and the healing brush worked from day one very much like the clone stamp tool you would hold down your option key or alt key click on the spot you wanted to use and then heal and it was much better at at healing an area or removing something than um or much easier than clone stamp then we said, hey, why should you have to hold down the option key and click first? Why not just use uh, the surrounding pixels automatically? So we introduced a year later the spot healing brush tool. And those tools are good, but those tools both do the same thing. They use the surrounding pixels just to fill in an area. And if you're removing a pimple on someone's face, that works great. You're moving like the, I think the example was the little, um, a uh, little spot on a piece of fruit, no problem. The surrounding pixels work great. But if you're trying to remove something like in this architecture, this little spike coming down from the light, light fixture, it wouldn't know that it's supposed to complete the circle behind that. Like it wouldn't know that the arch was supposed to be an arch. It would just fill in the surrounding pixels. So maybe it would come out okay. Maybe it wouldn't. It just depends on the example. And we've all been there. We've all seen examples where it did it perfectly or I still had to tweak it and do some more work after it was done. Well, that brings us to a brand new third tool called the Remove Tool. So the Remove Tool is the third in this generation of Healing Brush, Spot Healing Brush, and now Remove Tool. And this one is AI based. This one says, I'm not just gonna fill in the surrounding pixels. I'm actually gonna look at the whole thing and say, what would this have looked like if the thing you brush was never there? All right, so now let's go ahead and brush this out. In other words, when I let go, it needs to say, what would this look like if this spike, this light fixture was never there? So now I just let go. And that's what it would have looked like if the spike was never there. So again, this is going to change everything for removing distractions, for removing people, for removing things from shots. This arc is 
is now the way it would have looked if that light fixture had never been there. And that's the kind of stuff that is the AKA the David Copperfield tool. Yes, that's the kind of stuff that I, I again, is just gonna make my life easier. So AI for the good. Oh my God, love it. I know, me too. So I even went around later and played with some of the stuff like behind her, like uh, this is, I believe is a church or I don't know what this building is, but let's say I kind of brush this thing out behind her, whatever this fixture is. Did you see what it did there? <laughs> it, it said, well, if that one wasn't there and I'm going to keep the distance of the ones, the shorter ones that were there, I'm going to go ahead and fill it in and make it look like it was all the short ones all along. It's mind blowing what this does from an AI perspective. Okay, next up. I got to keep going. Can't get distracted. Okay, next up. Here's a photo you've seen me use a million times because you've seen me use it a million times every time there's a new way to remove something from a photo. I was, I was just going to stop with the one I just showed you and I was like, wait a minute, how would the remove tool work on this light stand that I had in Arizona when I took the shot and I removed several different ways, patch tool, healing, I've removed it every way we could. So now let's go ahead and just simply brush this out. Now I could use a bigger brush um, and do it faster, but I'm just going to build the anticipation here, kind of get all of that done and I'm not being very careful at all with telling it what to brush out. And yeah, you could duplicate the layer first, just in case you want to keep it, keep the original. Um, but let's just go ahead and do that. Yeah, that's the best one so far because I, I can't tell that it was ever there. Usually there might be a little spot where I have to go in and just tweak and do a little bit, but duh, why would I not be using that forever going forward? Okay. Uh, just a couple quick quick ones. Uh, let's switch over to Lightroom. We kind of spent most of our time in Photoshop. So just let's pop over here and do um, a couple AI things. Let me go to this photo. Let's uh, make sure we reset the edits on this one. So here's another one that uh, became AI based early on in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. I'm in Lightroom. Um, everything I'm showing you here is also in Lightroom Classic. If I pop over to edit. The thing I have been showing for ever since I started this masterclass is the auto button, the auto tone. And the auto tone used to be, it used to not be AI. So if you click auto, it would just make the same exact adjustments every single time. Now it's using machine learning and saying, hey, I'm going to make different adjustments based on the photo I see and what I th think it needs. So auto tone has been one of the first AI based things in Lightroom for years. All right, next up. Um, one of the other new things is AI based masking. So for example, which example do I want to use? Um, well, we'll use this one, we use it a million times. So let's go here, let's go to masking. And for example, we have um, the ability to select subject. Now there's three subjects, so if I assume if I say select subjects, it's going to select all three, and it did. But it selected each person in you know, as a as a subject separate from the background. Now that's one way to do it. We also now have an added more selections. So there's people-based selections as well. So if I say select person one, select person two, and say view all, and say select person three, I can now individually select them because it just figured. I'm going to give you these choices just in case. And so if I go ahead and choose that, I can even go in and specify what part of the person I want to select. Do I want to select their hair, their teeth, their lips, their uh, eyes, eye sclera, their eyebrows, their body skin, or new facial hair and clothes. So if I select their clothes, just that one person and create a mask of his clothes, I can go ahead and quickly and easily change anything about that shirt that I want. So. AI-based masking in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. Now, it also goes a step further because we brought this to your phone via adaptive presets. So an adaptive preset is using Select Sky, using, uh, for example, if I go to this photo and I create a, um, let's reset this one as well, reset. And I were to go in and do a Select Sky, 
I can now, uh, it'll select the sky just like it did before and I can make an adjustment to the sky. Uh, so just like we did in Photoshop, but this is doing it in Lightroom and the masking uh, in Lightroom is definitely more welcome because before you'd have to brush this if you wanted to make any uh, changes to the sky, you'd have to brush the sky to select it first. Now all that brushing goes away because it will just let me go ahead and select the sky. Now adaptive presets would mean I want to make a mask that no matter which sky I, I select, it will auto select the sky, then apply whatever I said in the preset. So for example, if I switch over to my phone, let's bring my phone over for a second. I've got Lightroom running on my phone. And if I were to now go in to, let's say this photo, and I were to now go into presets, um, I have adaptive portrait, I have adaptive sky, I have adaptive subject. So that means Automatically select whatever subject it is, apply the preset. Automatically select whatever sky you have, apply the preset. And for portrait, automatically select the person and do any one of these. For example, I don't have a, the ability to get a clothes mask on mobile, but if I use an adaptive preset that enhances the clothes, even though I didn't do much, now when I go into masking, I have that clothes preset that I can then go in and change the color of her clothes any way that I want because I used an adaptive preset to select the clothes. So even on mobile, AI is here and ready to go. Last but not least, let me do a couple things really quickly. I'm running out of time. So let's, I want to leave a little, little bit more time for, um, I'm running out of time. So denoise, uh, we talked about this a couple times already. Talked about it in new features. If I were to show you, there's a ton of noise in this photo. And now we have an AI based denoise that will let you go in and simply use AI to figure out how to best remove the noise. I can crank up the slider and remove more noise. Click, click enhance. That will create a not supported this feature. Oh, I might have a photo that's not supported. I might have a, a, a smart, a smart preview. Anyway, it will give me a brand new DNG. You've seen me do this a couple times already. You've seen me do it on the train photos and it will give me a brand new photo that has been denoised. All right, um, last but not least here, denoise. Um, since I'm in Lightroom, I have a few more AI features that Lightroom Classic does not have. So for example, if I go to my all photos, if I go to my all photos, and I were to then say search for waterfall, it's going to find all the waterfalls in my over 200,000 photos. I didn't keyword these, I didn't do any of this, it just found them. On your mobile devices, you also have another AI-based feature called Best Photo. So it will look at a collection or an album of photos and it will use AI to think, figure out what it thinks is your best photo. All right, so it's right time with the desktop stuff, let's head over to the browser and let's talk about the elephant in the room, <laughs> Adobe Firefly. This is a brand new beta we just came out with about a month ago less than a month ago, about a month ago, and you can head over to firefly.adobe.com and sign up for the beta. Unfortunately, entry into the beta is not, I always do that, entry into the beta is not immediate, so it may take some time to get you approved, but once you're approved, you can go in and do the things I'm doing. So generate means I can go to generate and I can see some examples that are already been generated. None of these images existed. It actually built these images based on a text prompt. So if I click on an image, um, that I like, for example, teddy bear, the, the text prompt is teddy bear on a, here, let me get out of your way, teddy bear on a bookshelf in an office. So if I change teddy bear to, because you guys know I like science fiction and toy robots, toy robot, and I say generate that, it will then interpret that prompt and generate four images that didn't exist. Now you might say, well, Terry, of course those images existed. They're in Adobe stock. It's, it's you know, there are robots there, there are bookshelves there. All right, let's, let's take it up a notch then. Toy robot um, wearing sneakers, taking a selfie on a bookshelf in an office. That does not exist in stock, guaranteed. Go, look, go search stock, see if you can find this. All right, so here we are. Robot wearing a wearing sneakers, taking a selfie 
that is a brand new image that didn't exist. So where this technology is going is it's great to be able to generate images that didn't exist and be able to use them and, and advertise with them and so forth and so on once this is released. But we're building this technology into our tools. So Adobe Express, Photoshop, Illustrator, um, these will get the ability to select part of an image and get a text prompt to replace that part of the image with whatever you type. For example, I'm wearing a purple, purple shirt. Select my shirt, change it to a leather jacket, and it will just make a leather jacket no matter which way I'm turned or posed that looks like I was wearing it from day one. So that's where Firefly is headed. Now, let's say you're not, he's not wearing Air Jordans though. That's right, because we don't, we don't, we make it commercial safe. We're not using known brands that we don't have the rights to use. We wouldn't have the rights to use Air Jordan. So that's why it doesn't bring up a particular brand if you type it in. All right, last but not least, let's go ahead and generate text effects because these are my favorites. This is just simply, hey, maybe I wanna add some text to my photo that's very unique. So I like gold, I like dripping things, I like sweets, I like all kinds of, any of these are good, any of these are great. Uh, but let's say I like, uh, let's go back to the gold one. That gold one's kind of fun. Let's say we do this one and it's gonna bring up the word Firefly because we haven't told it anything yet. So let's go ahead and change that Firefly to Adobe Live. I'm just changing the word in the lower left-hand corner and it's now re-rendering each letter with the gold, shiny gold liquid drip that's in the prompt. And I put it on a yellow background. I can change the color or make it transparent. But let's go ahead and say, um, instead of shiny gold liquid drip um, with cookies. All right, I just randomly thought that. So generate. And so now it is, uh, I've added with cookies to it. And now it is, um, yeah, those don't look like the kind of cookies I want. All right, let's say cookie. Let's, so again, changing the prompt, the order of it, cookies with shiny gold liquid drip and take off the end. All right, generate that one. So sometimes it's, it's like giving preference to the left side of the prompt and not necessarily doing the right side. I'm not liking that either. Let's do donuts instead. All right, I'm gonna get it to be the way I want. Hold on, donuts, couldn't load, retry. It is a beta. All right, let's refresh. Mm, 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 not what I envision. Let's go in and let's try camera lenses. There we go. So now I'm getting more of what I was looking for. So just, uh, we can see it's mixing camera lenses in with the gold liquid drip. Now, if I don't want that to be on yellow, I can click transparent. I can also say, make it tight, loose, or medium, meaning how much the splatter of gold is away from the characters. So I made it loose, so the splatter is kind of splattering more out. And I can even say camera lenses and, and sneakers. I don't know, just random thoughts. Camera lenses and sneakers. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'm on the photography plan. Lightroom plus Photoshop. Do I still have access to Firefly? Everyone has access to Firefly because it's a free beta. So it doesn't matter what plan you're on. All right, so there we go. So some sneakers have been mixed in along the way. I can kind of see them like that one's a sneaker in the O. And what's different is it's actually contouring the text, the, the effect around the actual individual letters. So even if I change the font to a different font, it will re-render it based on that. Look at that, look at the sneakers in this one. That looks cooler. All right, uh, someone said, uh, I think you need to be very specific about the type of cookie like chocolate chip. Maybe, well, let's say um, with sneakers and chocolate chip cookies. See if you're right. All 
All right, generate. There you go. Chocolate chip cookies was very specific, and that's what I got. So now I got camera lenses, sneakers, chocolate chip cookies with dripping gold on my Adobe Live. That's my time. <laughs> so head over to, uh, and by the way, so you can, um, you can download the result. That'll download a ping file. It will be, it will be watermarked because these aren't available for commercial use yet. That will just be um, for you to play around in like we've been playing around in today. Uh, so if I generate a new image and I say that I want um, uh, summer cottage on Mars, and I say generate that image, I'll get a summer cottage on Mars. I can go in and change it from photo to graphic to art. I can choose the kind of style that I want. I can even choose the lighting and composition. So if I want it to be shot from below, shot from above, I can do all of that. And you can just go in and have some fun. So with that said, cheers everyone. Thanks for watching and to see that shot from above. Uh, we will catch you on the next one. Have a great weekend. Go sign up for Firefly if you haven't already. And again, AI is going to be your friend. We're trying to make it your partner, not your replacement. Cheers, everybody.